Happy Easter and welcome to our service of Easter Sunday, Holy Communion. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let's say together that prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to sing our first song, which is He Has Risen. Oh, 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 
We are now going to have our first Bible reading. A reading from Acts, chapter 10, starting at verse 34. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Lazarus with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did in the country of Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and caused him to appear not to all people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that anyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We confess our sins to God. Let's say together. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We sing the resurrection song, See What a Morning. See what a morning, gloriously bright, with the dawning of hope in Jerusalem.
Today's Gospel reading is John chapter 20 verses 1 to 18. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped round Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. A prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Try to imagine for a moment, if you will, that you are one of the disciples of Jesus and you wake up in a cold sweat remembering the horror of what happened on Friday. It's so terrible. Your friend, your teacher, the one you gave up everything to follow, has now died. He did not even have a decent death. Crucified outside the city wall, like a common criminal alongside criminals in that awful place. If only you could have done something if only the crowd had let Jesus go instead of a murderer, Barabbas. Your shouts of, let Jesus go, he's done nothing wrong, was drowned out by the screams of the others in the crowd, yelling on the top of their voices, crucify him, crucify him. You watched as he was mocked, as he was beaten, you watched as the crown of thorns was pushed down on his brow and you felt so helpless. You watched as he was forced to carry the cross, the heavy wooden cross, to Golgotha, the place of the skull. You watched as the soldiers nailed his hands and feet to the cross and raised it on its stand. You cried out and watched his last hours of pain 
and suffer until he shouted, It is finished, and breathed his last breath. As he died, you felt like something inside of you died as well. Your dreams shattered, your hope turned to fear, your purpose now purposeless, everything gone. For three years, you have been the disciple. How the days have flown by. It seems like only yesterday when he asked you to follow him, to be a disciple alongside the others, and you listened to every word that he spoke to you, as he spoke to the crowds of people from out the region. Though to be honest, you didn't always understand everything that he said, but he always took time to explain things. All he wanted was everything, and you gave it. All he asked for was that you believe, and oh, how you believed. You'd seen the impossible happen. You'd seen blind men receive their sights, the lame walk. You'd even seen Lazarus, a dead man, live again. You had lived and you had believed with all your hearts. But now your belief is dead, as dead as your master. As you lay on your bed, you begin to mourn again. It seems like that that's all you've done since Thursday night. You think about your past, your present and your future. There is nothing left now. All you can do is go home. Leave Jerusalem. Leave your hopes. Leave your dreams. And just go home. You might as well try to recover your yesterdays and try to go back to the life that you had before. Your dreams I was dead as Jesus, in his borrowed tomb, captured, beaten, crucified, dead and buried. But then you hear shouts from outside, he's alive, he's alive, the tomb is empty, Jesus is alive, he has risen from the grave. What? Can it be? Suddenly your heart is filled with joy. You jump up and rush out to discover the two Marys had seen the empty tomb. Mary had been at the empty tomb and she saw the empty grave clothes and then Mary had seen Jesus. Jesus wasn't dead. Jesus was alive. And everything was going to be okay. Imagine you are one of the disciples that Easter morning. Instead of mourning Jesus' death, you are celebrating the resurrection. You are celebrating Jesus being alive. The sadness of death on the cross and crushed dreams are shattered. But now there's joy, exhilaration, there's peace. Your focus, our focus has changed. It's not on death, it's on life. Jesus is alive. The tomb is empty. The purpose, the future, and there is hope. Oh, if Jesus' story had ended at the cross, hope would have died with him. But it didn't. Without the resurrection, following Jesus Christ would be pointless in my mind. Belief in the resurrection is central to our Christian faith. We believe, as did the early church, that Christ has risen from the dead, and there was actually a physical resurrection. When we look back on the events of history and the events of the first Easter, we're looking at more of the events in history. The events of Easter changed history. The events of Easter changed our destiny. We believe in the risen Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour. We believe Jesus defeated death and death could not hold him or contain him. Sin and its effects are defeated. Sin no longer has its reign over us. It no longer has a grip on us. And this is our certain hope. Just as Jesus was raised and restored, we will be raised and restored too if we place our faith in him. The cross shows us the seriousness of our sins, but it also shows the immeasurable love of God. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost, and Jesus came to set 
the captive free. Jesus came to break the power of sin in our lives and Jesus came to bear the punishment of our sin. Jesus came to die on a cross in our place. Then, on that first Easter Sunday, Jesus was raised from the dead so that you and I can be forgiven, so that we could believe, so that we could repent and be born again, so that we could be assured of our eternal life, our place in heaven with God the Father for all eternity. Jesus overcame the grave and he's still alive and available for you. He is alive, the tomb is empty. He has risen from the grave. The four gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, all recall the events of that amazing day. Each one of them speaks from their own viewpoint, and yet there's no contradictions. The accounts all blend into a beautiful narrative. The first people to see Jesus alive after his resurrection were the women who went early that Sunday morning to the tomb. Then the Bible tells us, very early on Easter Sunday morning, the women there returned to the tomb where the lifeless body of Jesus had been placed. He'd been taken down from the cross on the Jewish Sabbath. They wondered about moving the great stone door of the tomb when they arrived, but they found that it had already been moved, rolled away, and the tomb was empty. Those first two verses of our Gospel reading from John 20, early the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Madeline went to the tomb and she saw the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have placed him. While Mary had gone to speak to Peter and John, the other woman entered the tomb and saw an angel who had told them that Jesus had risen. Mark 16 tells us that the women were shocked, but the angel said, Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who is crucified. If he isn't here, he has risen from the dead. Look, this is where they have laid his body. Now go and tell the disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. And you will see him there, just as he told you before he died. Then the women went to tell the disciples. That first Easter Sunday was certainly unlike any other day, and that day will never be forgotten. The fears of the disciples were dispelled. They became men of joy, boldness, and dynamic energy. The experience for themselves was proof that Jesus was alive. The resurrection of Jesus Christ turned 11 men who were utterly defeated into bold and completely committed band of witnesses who created so much of the early church. The Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians 3 concerning the great desire of his life. He said, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. It was the power of the risen Lord Jesus Christ that the early Christians went out to change the world. They knew that power and we are called to be the same. To live out our faith, share his love and goodness. He is alive, the tomb is empty, Jesus is alive, he has risen from the grave. This Sunday we can affirm our faith, place our faith in the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Trust the one who loved us so much that he was willing to die for us. Trust the one who has conquered death from the grave. And may the risen Christ be real in our hearts today. I wish you a very happy and blessed Easter.
thing be your creating one God Almighty Through your Holy Spirit conceiving Christ the Son Jesus our Savior
this earthly death which hurts so much has been eternally overcome, that through your wounds we will be healed, and through your rising we too will be raised to life beyond our earthly death and will be united once again with loved ones. We take a few moments now to bring our own sorrow to the foot of the cross, to remember lost loved ones and to picture them before God. Lord God, we thank you for the lives of those who have died. Please bring comfort and healing into the lives of all who are grieving. May they take comfort in the acts and words of kindness from friends, family and neighbours. We thank you for your own death and resurrection, which brings life and hope for all throughout eternity. Lord, strengthen and uphold those in any need or pain. Give courage for the time and tasks ahead of them. Help us all to look for you in the good and difficult times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for these coming weeks, giving thanks for the rollout of our vaccination programme and for the releasing of some of the restrictions of lockdown. We pray that we would remain careful and considerate towards others in our behaviour and decision-making so we can all keep each other safe. May vaccines be readily available to all and that it won't be an issue of profit or politics. We pray for everywhere across the world where people are not safe from COVID-19 and from all other things which put them in danger. May we see a time of greater understanding and generosity, a time of healing and restoration for people and planet as we look towards the cha next challenge of tackling climate change. May we see a time of mending all that has been broken and a time of weapons being beaten into tools for the use of good for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Lord, there is so much tension in our world at the moment over so many different issues. We pray in this culture of injustice, blame and accusation for a real desire for justice, for genuine listening, understanding and discussion so that issues can be understood and resolved in a good way. We pray for integrity and honesty from all leaders and others in authority, so that we can move forward together to create a more just and caring society. Help us as Christians to play our own part in speaking out where we can and also to share your love for others when we meet them through our actions and words for our own integrity and, in and honesty as we look forward, hopefully to being able to reopen the church again fairly soon. Help us to prepare ourselves to being an open and welcoming, welcoming church, ready to listen, pray, care, and bring the hope we have to others. Transform us and renew us. May we truly be Easter people, alive with hope and ready to be a blessing to each other and to the world. In your name, Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We join to sing, O Lord, your tenderness.
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that it intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts, that they may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son, as we eat and drink these holy gifts in your presence. Form us in the likeness of Christ, and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, O Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her peace, and preserve her in peace. And bring us at last with all your faithful saints to that vision of the eternal splendour for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in heaven and earth, we worship you, Father Almighty, songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be, be your name. name. Your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your will be done. done. On, on earth, earth as, as in heaven. heaven. Give us today, today our daily bread. bread. Forgive, Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of our world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to suffer. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. I take this in remembrance. That Christ's body was broken for me, and I am truly well. Drink this remembrance that Christ shed his blood for me, and I am truly grateful. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection has delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant to us to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen.
The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. So we hope that on Monday and Thursday at 7pm you can join us for our Zoom prayer meetings. So we wish you a wonderful Easter and God's richest blessing.